hey, Yo, hey, hey. what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Weekend Geek, where we're going to talk about a bunch of things going on in pop culture, movies, TV shows, video yeah. games, um, just, you know, all the geeky stuff that you can handle. Uh, you and uh, with us today, we've got Charlie. What's going on, Charlie? What's up? I'm Carlos Charlie from Reboot Robot and also here on several other shows, even uh, Saturday Morning Toy Box. Check us out on Saturdays. Awesome show. You won't regret it. But uh, right now, yeah, you know what? There was a lot of news this uh, this past week. So I, I noticed we, we, we've been notifying each other about all kinds of things. So I can't wait to see what we have in store, what's lined up, and just talk about it, see how we feel about it. So pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, one of these days I'm going to share with you everything before the show. <laughs> but then again, I guess it's kind of good to know that, you know, there's some things that we can talk about. We don't, we don't pre-talk you know yeah it's like fresh like a fresh um expression you know like oh yes, yes you know nothing scripted nothing our first scripted. reactions yes yes first reactions okay. you got it all right well uh before we get started obviously let's give a shout out to our sponsors yep we've got our sponsors over at cover price so if you want to get 30 days of unlimited cover price for only 99 cents mm -hmm. you just gotta type in the code nerdvana14 and you can get your uh you know put your collection in there keep track of it Keep track of all the, uh, you know, the market, and you know, right now it's a good time to buy. I'm telling yeah. you, I, mm -hmm. I just showed off uh, like a few books on Saturday on the toy box, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I got them for pretty darn cheap compared to what they were going for the last few years. Hell yeah! <clears throat> all right, and if you want to get some of those store exclusives, those incentives, some toys, uh, you want to get 10 percent off, mm -hmm. you can type in the code. TNH10 and go over to our friends at Bird City Comics. Uh, I think they have a World Tree. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, a hip hop uh, homage. The Run the Jewels. That's it. Ah, Run the Jewels. Nice. Yes. Dude. Yeah. So go check them out. All right, and then go over to DisplayGeek.com. You can save ten percent off your first purchase by typing the code Team Nerd Herd. Mm -hmm. You can get your protectors for all your toys, your video games, your action figures, your Funko Pops. And you can get some shelves, uh, shelving for them. So go oh, check yeah. them out. And then, of course, we give a shout out to the Four Horsemen. We got Uncle Rudy, Something Wong, Deanime, et cetera, and Glenn 2K12. And then, of course, our resident DJ at Beats by Monster. Go say hi to Eddie for us. Um, hopefully, we'll get to see him uh, soon because uh, nerd stuff. season's coming up. Yes, it is, <laughs> sir. Yes, it is. Can't wait. All right, and then we've got a shout out to our chat. Of course, GT Key Comics sneaks in here somehow. Oh, man. Real, real hey. quick, real first. He, he sneaks through to the back, through the back I door. <laughs> and then we've got Uncle Rudy in the house. Hey, Rudy, what's Hello, up, buddy? Hello, Uncle Rudy. It's long Thank time to see. Thank you for joining us. Thank you Thank for you. being here, sir. All right, and then uh, we got Sticks, Ooh, boy. What's Sticks going boy. on, what's sir? Up, yes, it is a weeky, geeky kind of week. So, uh, let's get it going all right and uh of course i've got to bring it up and then we we'll have to learn to do this beforehand <laughs> all right all right let's get this started this just happened today i believe mm. uh we're actually gonna talk about some comic books uh <laughs> so cgc obviously cgc has been lately in the news for all the wrong reasons yeah. Um, they have been going through a lot of uh, suits, uh, lawsuits, that is, uh, in regards to uh, people, you know, stealing from other customers and employees. We've got uh, people who were switching out comic books, uh, representing comic books that weren't the actual comic books that were actually graded. Um, so there, there's all kinds of things going on. But <clears throat> CGC has just purchased... Uh, uh, James Spence auth authentication, which is basically JSA. And if you're in the sports world or in the wrestling world or you know, anyone who gets autographs, you know who JSA is because they are the people who usually authenticate those autographs, give you a little sticker, serial number, you can look it up. Um, and uh, CGC has always had a problem with doing grading um, on <laughs> books that have autographs on them that they never witnessed. Right. So they would only um, allow the ones that their employees or, you know, someone who works for CGC witness the authentication of the, the autograph. Yep. And then 
uh, that's when you're going to get a gold label. Uh, if you don't have that and you have a, like, let's say you got Stanley's autograph on the inside cover, right? They're going to mark it as a green. Uh, well, maybe not on the inside. If it's on the outside, uh, they're going to mark it green. So it's going to be a green label, which means it has been written on or altered or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and now that they have JSA, they can possibly authenticate those autographs going forward. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know if you're a big s slabber or autograph seeker, um, but what do you think of this? Um, I just saw this all, all over the internet, and I saw, like, uh, there's a meme where those guys going like this, like, hiding behind a tree, and he goes trying to get those uh, blue labeled um, already graded by JSA because they're not going to exist anymore. So those are going to be worth more, <laughs> the original JSA, you know, um graded things but uh it does sound kind of like a you know like a monopoly in a way but then again see i mean <laughs> cgc has been around for a very long time and you're right they need a witness in order to have things graded they have their own little they have their own technique on how to how to do these things so i mean uh to be honest the only thing i've ever graded was um was cgc i never went through gsa because i do have cards but i never graded those so it's not really a big loss for me but only only done CGC. Well, JSA doesn't. I don't think JSA did grading. They only authenticated autographs. Okay, authentication. I never. Yeah. I never worked through them ever. So. Uh, yeah, I, I actually have a lot of experience with them because um, I used to get uh, autographs from you know athletes. Okay. So I have like Magic Johnson's autograph, Jerry oh, Rice, cool. Bo that's Jackson, cool. Tim Brown, Marcus Allen. Like I've got all those uh, autographs. I even have a Clyde Drexler autograph. Um, but I never got it authenticated because my father got it from him. He met him on a plane or something. Oh, yeah. You can't have them, dude. I mean, of course. Because if you don't have it authenticated or witnessed, um, these signatures are like, you know what? I met this person and uh, and he signed my card. It just shows that you inter you interacted with that person. But if you yeah. send, like you said, if you send this, if you got to sign on an airplane, it says uh, CGC, you get, I think, what, what, what color you get? Yellow, right? Was it yellow or what do you get? Yeah, it's, so it's a gold label if it's authenticated by CGC, which is witness. Exactly. But if it's not witnessed, it's just like somebody written on it. Yeah. You know, like, so someone scribbled on it. Now it's a green label. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, might as well not even get that. Just have it signed stating, you know what? I met this person. He signed my comic card, whatever, and that's it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I actually have a legit comic book that um, has a remark on it. But it's on purpose. It's limited. Like it's actually numbered. The uh, the artist numbered it. So right, there's only so right. many of those um, available, and it got a green label um, because it wasn't done in front of CGC. So exactly, that sucks, huh? Like, now yeah, now but... I might just crack that open and get a gold label. I know, label. right? Exactly. So there you go. Yeah, we'll so. see what happens uh, on how they go forward with this in the future. But for sure, for um, sure. It's definitely one of those steps that I think CGC needed to take because um, CBCS would authenticate autographs, even though um, they were also in a little bit of uh, issues with uh, being caught authenticating uh, not fake autographs. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get going. Uh, if you guys are Lurkana fans and collectors oh. or even players, um, they're offering new variant cards for prizes for a new competitive circuit. So there's actually going to be like tournaments and circuits and stuff. And oh, cool. um, if you want to see some of the image, here are some of the variants. So uh, Dragonfire is going to have this new variant art, uh, Let It Go. <laughs> uh, Cinderella is going to have a new one. She's going to be all armored up, knighted up. Oh, like the uh, movie. Uh -huh. You got Rapunzel. And these are just alternate art. So there's going to be alternate art cards given away or won at these circuits. Um, so I, I don't know when. I think these start later in the year. I think May. Yeah, okay. May. So it starts in Georgia and France. So it's going to be worldwide. So everyone get ready. Oh. Uh, if you guys are learning how to play or you're already playing, um, you know, you got to sharpen Check those skills and start – Start going to your, you know, your LCS or your uh, local card store and, and join those little tournaments so you can practice. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and the thing is, Disney is worldwide. It's not known by only one country or two. It's worldwide. So Yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere. So it, it fits. 
Oh, let me see what um to get protected seeds from my good stuff. Yeah, that's you yep. need to protect your your investments, man. That's for sure. I'm waiting for a live action set. Ooh, <laughs> that would be crazy. Oh, well, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised, dude. That comes. I actually set, won't won't be surprised, but I still would think there would be the artist versions. But who knows? Oh, why I mean, not? That's a good. It'd idea. be cheap to take, you know, scenes from the from the movies. Yeah. Right? course like screenshots from the or i don't know renderings at least or something that'd be pretty cool yeah all right well let's let's get into some tv news yeah. um if you've been watching gen v uh on uh i think it's it what is it is it, prime? it amazon yeah it's yeah, amazon. amazon prime yeah uh season one was great um it's just as crazy as the boys but actually the storyline was really cool and it's very integrated into the whole world of the boys and they've been greenlit since October for season two, but now they're uh, getting an update and it should start filming within the next month. So it's oh. happening. It's it's shooting a lot sooner than most people thought, uh, which means it could possibly get in late 2024, or early 2025 release, probably most likely early 2025 release. Um, but we'll see how well it goes with post-production and all of that. Uh, but have you seen Gen V? No, I haven't, dude. I haven't started oh. this. I should. I mean, of course, it's a spin off of um, of the boys, so I should. Yes. I haven't. Uh, yeah, I haven't got around to this. I'm just telling you right here, like the only. I think one of the real reasons why this was a very successful, obviously, other than the fact that it's in the same vein as the boys, mm -hmm. um, which was a successful. Um, they introduced characters that are so powerful in this series. That you wonder if maybe they can take on Homelander. Oh, that's what the okay, I see what you're saying. So yeah, so I mean, different, really different cool. players in the game. Different players yeah. are coming in. Okay, okay. I'll let Rudy, Rudy says Gen B passport me. <laughs> What's that? Rudy, he says Gen B passport me. You don't like it, man? What, you don't like that? The boys is good. Yeah, this, it it's a crazy series for sure. Is it going to lead to? Have you heard? Of, you heard a hero gasm, right? Yes, we hero gasm already happened in um, season three of the boys. Was it season three? Okay, so that yeah. was part of hero gasm. Okay, so it doesn't lead off there. Okay, that's cool. And I think they're going to the boys season four now. Yeah, that's. I heard that was greenlit from somewhere, so that should be. Well, I mean, I think it's done. I think it's going to release sometime this year. Ooh, can't wait to see that so, then. Hell yeah. yeah. All right, and then moving on to some other news. Um, this hit me really hard because I was like, oh, no way. They're really going to do a reboot of The NeverEnding Story. So uh, Seesaw, I guess, Productions, which, you know, it's one of these minor production companies, uh -huh. but they won the bidding for The NeverEnding Story rights. Oh, and now they're going to remake The NeverEnding Story, but in a series of movies because, you know, there's – the series of books, I think. I think so, so. Yeah. So, like, they're they're planning on spreading it out over a, a few movies, and I'm I'll be happy to get a bigger story um, mm -hmm. with new technology, new CGI. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I mean, you know, I'm I'm also skeptical because you know I loved the original movie. Oh man, kid. it's classic fantasy, <laughs> 80s, 90s fantasy, bro. Yes. I mean, I remember uh well Atreyu was part yeah. of the the Atreyu and uh full full not full gore. What's the the drag the dog dragon's name? Full gore Fangor? I can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like that, but I mean I always forget it. Dude, those are so mem memorable moments in that movie. Part two came out, but that was like straight to movie. It wasn't that good. Yeah, it was straight so, to, to uh, VHS. Straight to VHS back in the day, yes. So um, part one was epic, and if they could do Justice Part 2 and also Part 3, even make it a trilogy, I'm for it, dude. For, you know, like you said, now the modern day, you know, um, graphics that we have and what, whatnot, they can make it a great story or a movie. So I'm all for it, man. I'm cool with it. Nice. And plus the movie, you got to keep the, you got to keep that theme song, though. Don't change the theme song. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I would at least go. I mean, you would have some sense of that that song in there, maybe yeah. slightly remade, you know, whatever. Right. 
Yeah, maybe but, uh, saying by Beyonce or something, you know, like you know. Let us know what you guys think <laughs> uh, of them remaking Never Ending Story and expanding the storyline. Keep the song though. Keep the song, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh let's go on to A24 Civil War. Oh, Civil you guys War. haven't heard of okay. this. Uh, there's a movie called Civil War that's coming out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's basically a modern day Civil War, kind of in the vein of what's going on in America right now. You know, we're, yeah. we're not going to talk about politics here. No. But I mean, you know, country is kind of split on their thought process and, and their beliefs. And so, um, you know, it this leads to a clash and obviously it goes really far and um, people are seceding uh, states are seceding and, and it's just all out civil war. And um, I've heard nothing but good things about this. Like it's, it's eerie, but a good story and maybe even a cautionary tale for all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you, have you heard of this movie and are you looking forward to seeing this? Yeah. I heard, yeah. I've heard about this movie. I've seen uh trailers and everything. It's scary because it could happen. I mean, it's once again like North and South type of deal back in history from a well, it's civil war, right. and uh, and once I mean, even watching the trailer, it's very very nerve wracking because uh -huh. like when you're, when you're trying to pass certain checkpoints, being taken over by a militia or other types of groups, and they're just like random people, random people, and there's no law, there's no law, you're not accounted for anything. It's really scary, dude. So it's like, and plus, I mean, they could, you could say anything and they could look at you as a traitor or for treason, depending on what, what their beliefs are. It's really scary, dude. And plus, I mean, and how many, and how much firepower people have now at the right? in di different states. It's scary. Local, community, so, yeah. local communities, communities mm -hmm. can like form these little small militias with, yeah powerful weapons <laughs> so it's really scary watching that i'm like it's not it's no. not impossible it's not impossible yeah. so but really i mean scary. i'm looking forward to it. like you, you need movies like this to like move the needle on people's thoughts and and like challenge those thoughts right mm -hmm. of course of course so so i'm i'm looking forward to this movie actually i mean as scary as it might seem yeah um, oh yeah it's definitely a good a good thing to like keep in the back of your mind going hmm this could always happen <laughs> that's what that's what makes it so thrilling and scary because it's not like some sort of demonic movie that's like oh you know what i'm not scared because it's fake it could never happen this can so it kind of plays with your thoughts like oof, what if yes. So yeah hmm. all right well uh let's go into some rumors um if you guys haven't heard there's a rumor oh, going around there that that's aaron <laughs> uh taylor johnson oh, this is guy. is yeah. up for the bond role the new Bond role. Um, this is reported by The Sun, uh, which is a British um, magazine, tabloid kind of mm -hmm. news. Um, I don't know if they're tabloid. Don't don't kill me on that. I'm not in the UK. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, know, right? but they're also a contradicting report by the BBC, which is another UK news organization. Yeah, that's, that's a huge one. And, yeah. and they're saying that this is absolutely not true. So um, I <laughs> loved him in Kick Ass. I, I love the fact that you know, yeah, um, cool. a, a lot of his newer roles, like he's 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 a great actor. Bullet Train. Um, yeah. Oh him. god, that was such him and the other guy. The, the uh, twins, right? They're called the twins, and they're. Like, <laughs> I think his name was uh, what, Tangerine. Yes. Tangerine and something else. Yeah, they had really weird names. They were they, hilarious. They were hilarious. I love them. Dude. That <laughs> was probably one of the best parts of that movie. <laughs> Those like, two it's the, guys. It's the twins. <laughs> like they look so apart. It was hilarious. Oh yeah. man. But yeah, I mean, what would you think of him being Bond? I mean, would that throw oh. you off, or would you care, or does he fit the mold? Uh, he's a little young, dude. To yeah. be honest, he's a little young, I think. I think they and want him for like 10 years, though. That's why, like, they want an actor oh, for 10 years at so least. He, so he could last that long. Because, I mean, like three, like three movies at least. Unless that they do like a James Bond the early years, I don't know, yeah. maybe or something like that. Well, maybe? they might be, they might be rebooting it in the sense of like starting from like more of a earlier part of training. his career. Like yeah, going exactly. through his training. 
Oh, if it takes that course, okay, I could see that. Uh, but does he have an accent by any chance? Where's he from? That's what I don't. I don't know. think he... so. I don't remember him having an accent at all because I remember him doing uh, interviews for Kickass, and I don't think he had any accent. I think he's see that, that that's American. The, that's the thing because I mean, if, if you need to be James Bond, you need to have some sort of accent that adds to the suave. You know, not it can't be like an American being James Bond. I'm sorry, but like yeah, I mean, come on, it needs to be someone more. I don't want to say exotic because that's not the right word, lack of a better term. But um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I was raised differently. I was raised with Sean Connery. Yep. To Pierce, was it Pierce Pierce, Pierce Brosnan? Brosnan. Right? Yep. And I mean, and these guys are you know English, British. No, actually, uh, Sean Connery. He's not. He's a. Uh, is he Irish? No. He is Scottish. He? Scottish. Bam. Yeah, he was Scottish. So with these type of backgrounds, I'm used to. But for him, maybe for a newer generation, probably. But for me, raised for, in that background, not really. James Bond, the actors always felt like they're stoic actors. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if he strikes me as stoic, but you know what? I like know. I said, like you said, I, I don't mind if they're you know going at an earlier start of Bond's career. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm willing to see that because you never knew his early years, really, except yeah. for James Bond Jr. Wasn't that the cartoon, James Bond Jr.? Remember that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's an old cartoon, dude. I mean, that's like the early years. I don't know if that's even canon, but yeah. So that's I, old school. I mean, it had to be approved by the owners of the <laughs> rights, right? Like that family. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They they actually are the only ones who are that are that can actually cast James Bond. They have to agree right? to it. That's crazy. So yeah. we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Um, also. Uh, let's see. Where should I go here? Um, License to kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, dude. All yeah. right. All you Thundercats fans. Oh. There Ooh. is new reports of a live action movie. This has always been one of those rumors going around there. Someone wants to do the live action movie, you know. But we've got an actual update, and Adam Wingard from the – he's a director of the Godzilla Kong movie, mm -hmm. upcoming Kong movie. Um, he is working on the script right now as we speak with uh, his partner, Simon Barrett. So, okay. um, I mean, I'm getting excited a little bit, but, you know, if they're just working on the script, that means we're in pre-production. We're way far yeah. away. From yeah. any news of, of this actually moving forward so exactly. i mean but it's still good news because he's he says he's working on it right now after he's done with this uh promotion so i mean what do you think man i mean i'm all for thundercats movie but i mean it, I, I think it's going to be tough because first of all is it going to be heavily computer graphic is it going to be prosthetics because i mean you're talking about you know humanoid felines How's it gonna look? Is it gonna be? Oh, please don't um, let it be like cats. I'll just die. <laughs> you see Kill right me there. now. <laughs> it's right there. What fine line would you walk? More computer generated? I mean, I bet if they take either way, you're gonna piss off some fan base out there somewhere. You honestly. know, you have to do computer generated. Why? Because if you want like their lion manes to feel real and they're blowing in the wind, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like it's gotta be CGI. Right, yeah. And, so and it's, gonna, CG, yeah. it's gonna be easier these days, though. I think to CGI it, um, maybe do a half and half. Like, I don't know, some practical, some CGI. Like where where you could use it where it's more practical, but I don't know if they want to mix media it or um, what their plans are. But I mean, we're so far away from that planning stage. Exactly. I mean, I, I like that idea. Me meeting everybody halfway, half yeah. prosthetics, half CGI. I'm all for that. I mean, nowadays everything. I mean, CGI looks like almost like realism. So I can work with that. I, I mean, just want to see Mumra's trans uh, transformation. Oh man, I bet he'll look creepy in either CGI or prosthetics. I bet that dude has always been creepy. Yes. So, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I know, right? But um, if they're gonna have a Thundercats movie, I want my He-Man movie, dude. If they're gonna make Thundercats. Yeah. I want. My Tell -Man, me about it. Sense. Yeah, I want that. Where's that? So, I mean, that he has been in the talks for so many years, being so, passed on different directors and different actors. I don't know what's going on with that, but we'll see. I know what you mean, dude. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. We keep our fingers crossed uh, for all you uh, collectors out there. Yeah, yep. plenty of time to get your Thundercats number one. 
mm-hmm. and, and and all the issues that have you know first appearances. So yeah, tell oh yeah, very true. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Good idea. All right. Well, Beetlejuice, uh, Beetlejuice, 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 Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Uh, the return. Um, it's if everybody have your head out of the sand, you know that they made a second Beetlejuice with the pretty much the whole cast returning. Obviously, there are, some people cool. cannot return. Um, whether it is uh, legal issues or uh, they're no longer alive, no longer in the world of the living. Yes, yeah, <laughs> they're in the world. <laughs> yeah, they're with the sandworm. <laughs> exactly, I'm about to say that, dude. Yeah, um, they're, they're, wait, they're waiting in line. Remember how that, that huge line they were in, taking the number. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and so Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder returns, and here's our very first look from Entertainment Weekly. And I'm yeah. gonna make this a little bit larger so you guys can can you guys see that? Oh yeah, so cool. So I mean, so cool. that looks exactly like he looked 30, 40 years ago. Dude, that's dude, I, and he still has it. He still has the yeah. acting chops. This will be oh. easy for him. I mean, he can still easy. play Batman. I know for how many years, man? Come oh on. God, I mean, and he still looks and, good. He still looks good. And they're still trying to talk about like doing him as uh, getting him as Batman for the um, Batman Beyond uh, movie, if they that's ever so make cool. one. Yeah, that'd be excellent. Yeah, that'd be oh, cool. Yeah. But um, hold on, let's let's get this back to normal. Uh, and then here's a look at their family. So, so this cool. is uh, Catherine. Uh, darn it, what's her she, name? Sorry. She still looks looks good for her age. Uh, and how many yeah, years? it is Catherine O'Hara. Yeah. Um, General Ortega. We've got Winona Ryder. She still has the same hairstyle. Theron. Yeah, very I mean. Cool. Very, very cool. So supposedly yeah. it's three generations of uh, uh, of the family. That's and, awesome. And um, obviously they, they must be mourning the father's death because I don't think yeah. – I think he's one of the actors who's no longer alive. Okay. So they're playing – okay. Uh, yeah. I haven't – yeah. I think he's gone already. I haven't seen him in any movies at all. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm getting yes. a little excited. Uh, yes. This was one of my favorite movies as a kid growing up. You know, It's a classic. Such a classic, dude. Yeah. Still uh, is. I mean, it's like that movie's going to go down in history. I just, I just want the the head hunter, the head shrinker there. <laughs> <laughs> he spr- sprinkles the dust on his head, right? You guys. Oh my god! <laughs> so hey, he hey, takes his, hey, hey, hey! He, <laughs> he takes his ticket, right? He switches the ticket. Yeah, with yes. <laughs> the long ass ticket. Yeah. You oh, screw with his eye. You messed up. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So if any of you guys are looking forward to seeing the new Beetlejuice movie, let us know. Hey, even they come out with the new cartoon. I love the cartoon, too. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. That was... Is it new? No, there was a no, old no, one. No, no, no. The old one. Yeah, the old yeah. one. I mean, if, if they come out with the new one, too, I'd like that, too. I watched the cartoon as well. I love it. I, I would assume, depending on how popular this gets, and it's mm-hmm. not an impossibility. Mm-hmm. And let's get rid of this ad. All right. Well, let's go on to some trailers. All right. So oh. Ghostbusters, uh, Frozen Empire just had their, I think their third and final trailer. I'm not sure uh, if it was. The, no, it was the second trailer. Okay. And uh, there are people who have seen it. I mean, obviously, it's like the uh, all the critics and stuff. Sure, sure. They're early, early release or early mm-hmm. showings. Yeah. And unfortunately, right now it's getting a forty-five percent Rotten Tomato score. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what? I've also heard people who uh, critics who have seen it and come out and they've you know briefly talked about it, and mm-hmm. a lot of them are not like dis like disappointed. They're like you know it's a fun movie. It's not the greatest movie, mm-hmm. but it's just a fun um, in the vein of the Ghostbusters. You know, original Ghostbusters. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe a lot of nostalgia in this movie, but. Um, they aren't saying it's that bad. So, uh, are you looking forward to this? Uh, watching Ant Man, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ant Man uh, busting ghosts. Well, no, I, mean, um, I mean, after busting Kang, I mean, might as well bust some ghosts. I know, right? He could do anything, man. Yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, I heard this movie like um, it just it just crosses that bar to you know something fun to watch in the weekend. Nothing groundbreaking, but I heard it's fun enough. That's what I heard. And yeah. even even though if it wasn't, I mean, I. I watched all the ghostbusters i mean once again ghostbusters the first one we're talking about all these movies we grew up with and of course this is one of them and the continuation i mean i like it i heard they're going to come out with uh with another sequel so it's going to be you know like a like a trilogy of new trilogy so 
I'm down to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, I'm I'm still going to watch it. I, I sure, honestly, even if someone said it was really bad, I mean, I've watched okay. all these Ghostbusters movies. Yeah. And uh, why not? Honestly, it's just dumb fun. It, Ghostbusters sure. was never a great, great movie to begin with, even the first two. To be honest, it's a good idea. It's just a fun, good idea. It's just fun. It's enjoyable. It's, you know, so comedy, goofy. Yeah, it's super goofy. (laughs) And I like the fact that the old cast is there. Most of the old cast. That kind of, you know, that kind of, that's what pulls me in. Yeah, SNL, you know, second. Oh, my goodness. uh, uh, What is that? Comedy Club, second city. Mm. Yeah, like you got those 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 original guys from Ghostbusters. That's yeah, man. That's that's awesome. you got You can't expect we, you know, great great movie telling. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I know. Right? Something that will change my life forever. You know, no man. But Come what on. could change your experience is if you get some of these uh, popcorn buckets. Cool. So mm-hmm. right now there is two different popcorn buckets. Uh, one is a Slimer popcorn bucket and the other one's a ghost trap uh so if you guys want to see them this is what the slimer looks like it's kind of freaky and then uh i'm not sure if he's holding a popcorn bottle or it goes in or it's coming from his mouth i'm not sure so weird yeah i mean it's translucent that's cool i know robert would like that robert likes translucency i mean and just for what it looks like I'd get it even if it wasn't popcorn bucket. Yeah, I mean, just having it on your desk at work, I think would be pretty yeah. cool. I and mean, then this is—I guess you get these at Cinemark theaters. That's cool. I, I'm going to bring my my Dune bu- uh, my Dune bucket too. <laughs> have him refill the Dune. <laughs> sir, sir, we have to remove you from the theater. People, Can you please re- refill my Dune bucket? <laughs> Oh, and yeah. then look at this one. This is the one I know you like the most. That's um, so and, cool. And I actually kind of do too because it comes with this right? like purple like container yeah. that looks like it's actually part of the the whole thing. It looks like, like it's, it looks like a prop. It looks like a prop. Yeah. Looks very cool, man. Yeah, uh, of course I'd want that. I'm kind of down to get this one for sure. Right, right. It's like, uh, can, can you not put popcorn? I don't want to clean it. I know. Don't put butter on my prop. Come on, get out of here. Don't <laughs> put food on my prop. Yeah. That's so I mean. Cool. If you guys are gonna go watch the movie, you might as well get yourself a nice popcorn bucket. Just treat sit yourself. there and yeah, treat yourself. Hell yeah. Uh, even though it's gonna probably cost you fifty dollars just for one person. <laughs> I know your so tickets, right, the dude. whole popcorn, the, this thing. Oh, yeah, the drinks. It's, it's gonna probably cost you more than fifty. It's part of the experience, though. You gotta go yeah. to the movie sometime. Man. Yeah, these on. these popcorn buckets are thirty bucks. 30 that's bucks. crazy. No, that's what I figured. To be honest, looks yeah. cool though. It does look cool. Yeah. Secret. Uh, and then uh, we had the Furiosa new trailer. Uh, this is a second mm-hmm. trailer. Um, <clears throat> the first one was a teaser, and uh, this mm-hmm. is the first full one. And this one, honestly, like the first one, the teaser was kind of like, okay, you know, get used to not having uh, Charlize Theron in here, right? Uh, this is going to be Anya Taylor Joy. Um, and uh, it's going to be a prequel. You know, that, that's what it really set you up with. But this second one, bro, <laughs> it blew my mind how fantastic it actually looked. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that Chris Hemsworth is the villain. Yeah, it looks nothing like him, though, dude. Nothing it's awesome. like him. And if you and hear his nose. voice, you the hear nose. his voice. Oh, my God. He's just... It's he does such a good job of just playing yeah. a psycho crazy man in this apocalyptic world. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm oh, yeah. looking forward to seeing him as a villain. I'm looking forward to Anya Taylor Joy's version of Furiosa. Uh, I love the Mad Max world. Uh, yeah. I remember when I was a little kid, you know, this is this is a rated R movie series, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Oh, it's extremely violent, dude. The old I remember violent. my grandfather and my uncle taking me to go watch it. Oh my goodness, dude! No, this is strictly <laughs> rated R, dude. Back then, that was really rated R. Those people getting ran over, heads exploding, yes. limbs remember, getting cut off, dude. It's really bad. Love this series. Um, and I don't know. What did you did you see the trailer? And and what do you think? I like the art style, the art direction they took, man. I mean, 
but the the thing is the title it's called what it's called mad max something mad, mad max world or what it's this is furiosa and it says uh, mad it's, it's a mad max story or something like that or uh no no, no. it's uh yeah it's a it's a it's a mad max story or or yeah, some something. some some of the lines of that and it's kind of weird because um okay um mad the mad max uh, fury road how old is he? You think he's like probably thirties, late or mid thirties, late forties, yeah. maybe. And Furiosa is like maybe thirty. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of confused on the how timeline the is weird. Yeah, the timelines and stuff. Or is, is Mad Max just a title of uh -huh. someone who doesn't belong amongst any exactly. of the groups? Exactly. That that's what's confusing me. And also, you got to remember, Mad Max started with Road Warrior. That was Mel Gibson. Yes. It was Road Warrior. Uh, Road Warrior was already, he's like late 20s. And plus, the world hasn't gone to, to shit yet in that one. There's still gas stations. There's still stores. It was just getting in, in the in the gear of, um, of, you know, of this chaotic mess. So the timelines don't really sync up. I don't know, like, what's yeah. a remake or reboot or where is she from? Is she from a land that... In Road Warrior, we did not see that was already messed up. I, I kind of have a hard time linking it. But besides that, besides that lore, it looks awesome. I mean, it's it's, it's very Mad Max-like. I but thought that's, that's this whole mean. Mad Max world was just pure desert, mm -hmm. kind of like the opposite of Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good right? point. Yeah. And, yeah. and then when they start the trailer, I was like, holy crap, there's like a Garden of Eden somewhere on Earth. Oh yeah, that was the lore of always trying to find the the paradise or some oasis right. or something like that. And it was always just the fool's how you say it? like not fool's gold, but like it never existed or something like that. But but and now they're saying it does. Like, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I'm kind of kind of glad they're actually hitting that background. So it looks which awesome. Is, though. Which is funny, she's from that place of guard that Garden of Eden, but her they named her Furiosa. <laughs> like I know why would you be so angry? You'd be like a like Athena or some Greek or something yeah. or something with hope, but I don't know. She's trying to grab an apple, right? And the apple changed color. I, I like that art style. They they're playing with the colors a lot. I like. Yeah, well, they I think they're also playing with the biblical stories. Yes, okay. right. Like Adam that, and Eve. That, that or, visual. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that artistry. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to this movie. Yeah, oh, I'll definitely watch it. This year is the year of watching old school 90s like style <laughs> type of movies where like those summer hits those blockbusters yeah, yeah. where it's just it's either dumb silly fun or dumb action fun or dumb killing fun i want all of that dude this year <laughs> it's, fun, it's funny that you said that because i just saw a meme it's like 1985 and there's a guy saying I'm going to go to the movies to watch Dune and Ghostbusters. It's 2024. I'm going to the movies to watch Dune and Ghostbusters. Sure, <laughs> added Mad Max in there too. I know exactly. Have you noticed? It's like all these it's, old movies are coming back. Either they're re uh, uh, reboots or they're working off the original stories. Which well, quite cool. Speaking of old 80s movies, uh -huh. Alien <laughs> Romulus. Uh -huh just released a new trailer i didn't know this movie was coming out this caught me by surprise mm. yeah i oh, yeah. thought they were gonna hold off doing alien movies because some of the alien movies recently were not that great um yeah, they're all right um, they're okay but like just it gets confusing with timeline and where they were exactly and, like the lore the lore yeah the lore yeah. of it kind of gets all confusing mm -hmm. <laughs> but this trailer it's a one minute teaser trailer and I was blown away. This gave me alien vibes all over again. Mm -hmm. um, just the way they shot that scene. Um, it felt like a one shot almost in the sense of like your, your, the audience is the camera, mm -hmm. right? And you're, yep. you're seeing all this from this angles, from this distance and it closes in and all of a sudden, you you're running around, and everything's happening around you. Uh, that's cool. Gives a sense of so anxiety. <laughs> yes, that's. I think that's the point, right? The anxiety. Yeah. Oh of yeah. The, the head whipping around, seeing this. The head whipping around, seeing uh, a mm -hmm. face hugger jumping onto your friend. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's Pure the anxiety chaos. and the and the hype that you want from an alien movie. Yes. Um, yes. I, I couldn't believe that he nailed it. It 
and it almost looked like it was like the same kind of technology, the same kind of ships. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just seemed familiar. Dude, that's so Ripley right there. That's so Ripley. Right? Don't tell me that isn't Ripley. Yeah, that's... Where and, I mean... And this is right after the face hugger grabs her friend right in the yeah. face. I mean, I, I, I mean, uh, Ripley is one of the most... Her character is one of the most... I, those were one of the most iconic scenes when she gets into that power... Was it the power suit? Power loader. One of the most iconic scenes in, in, in all of movies, dude. I loved it. I love I love Aliens. So... At the, yeah, and, Matrix and, bit and, off of them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But I, I like how they're take they're taking this new vision because like the two the two last movies, the alien. I mean, the aliens. I like it like when it's dark, you can't see them. You see parts of them. You see them yes. running around. It kind of gives you like it kind of leaves imaginary like oh where is it? How's it look like? In the past two movies, there was a lot of, there was a lot of light. You could see all the aliens. You see where they're coming from. That's I think it's scary. hard. It's also but it's also hard to take the rabbit put the rabbit back in the hat because you've already mm-hmm. revealed what aliens look like. Uh, mm-hmm. They're different forms. Mm-hmm. Um, and, what are they called? Xeno, xenomorphs? Xenomorphs, xenomorphs right? yeah. Yeah, xenomorphs, okay. And then, you know, you've seen the face hugger. You've seen them coming out of people's stomachs. So it's not like you can wow. really hide what they look like anymore. Like, there's no point. Mm-hmm. But I think if you're going to, like, do this, I, I think you need some kind of suspense in that sense. Yes. Yes, uh, but exactly. maybe it's a new version of the alien, or it's a version that died off. So this is like mm-hmm. a prequel or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I don't know the timeline either to this, so that'd yeah. be kind of good to know as well. You're right. Yeah, we'll probably have to get more information going forward. But I'm actually excited. I, I just hope mm-hmm. it's not just that scene was good, <laughs> and the rest of it. <laughs> and the rest sucks. is all talking. It's all and the story. story is worse. You know, <laughs> it's it, it's a love story or something like that. Like okay, honestly, You're the right. less talking in those scenes, the best. I just want to hear yes. screams. Yes, screams and violence and anxiety. Yes, yes. and horror. I like that. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! I'm down for that. All right. Well, uh, if you guys haven't heard, the Teen oh, Titans. Yeah. I, I called this on Saturday <laughs> when we were in the toy toy box, yeah. right? I was like, I guarantee you, Teen Titans is in the works, in development for the new DCU, and they will do a new movie, yep. a live action one. And they needed. It. They got the green they light. Uh, yeah. The writer of Supergirl is also writing. Teen, uh, the Teen Titans movie. So is this going to somehow be part of the Superman, the new James yes. Gunn universe? Okay. Yes. That's cool. That's cool. At least I'm seeing some action of the whole universe coming together. So that's cool. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually believe um, in order for this DCU to be uh, successful, I know a lot of it's hanging on the new Superman movie, yeah. but you have to understand the audience and the audience it's a it's hard for us geeks and regular people to look up to a perfect god mm-hmm. that has almost no imperfections that can't be really beaten you know so it's not a story that people like are gravitating to mm-hmm. uh, but these type of stories where these were old sidekicks and now they form their own team and they're no longer under the shadow of these other people right like that's a storyline yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty a lot cool. of this, them are like teenagers or, or you know, really young 18, 20s, you know, kind of kids. And they're all going to have their little angst and hang ups and stuff. So they putting yeah. them together, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, uh, exactly. And then in a world that exists where there's super villains and superheroes. Um, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, they could take the story anywhere. There's so much to work off of. So that's pretty cool. I'm yeah. I and- see this. Who's going to be on the team? That's going to be the question. That's going to yeah. be a major question. Who they're going to cast for those roles. Ooh, that's is, another two. Is Damian Wayne, who's going to be in the Batman and Robin movie, um, is is he going to be part of the Teen Titans? Or mm. is it going to be uh, Dick Grayson? Or is it going to be another Robin? Don't you know? know. We need to see where the story takes us. Yeah, I mean, and obviously I think it's they're connecting a lot of things to Batman yeah. in this DC universe. So uh, I think that's a good thing. I just hope they don't screw up Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They got to really, I mean, he has his hands full. This universe has its hands full. 
but it looks like it's coming together so i'm happy to see that especially dc man dc has so Absolutely. many good stories heroes lore you name it dude there's so it's not many only good marvel, characters dude. Yeah. yeah it's not it's not only marvel man dc also had a huge play in pop culture and comic book world you know that yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I, I've always been a fan of DC. It's just, yeah, you can't be overly excited when you get movies like the DCEU. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it tried, but hey, at least yeah. hopefully I, this 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 will work. I get it. Look, I'm I I get it because there was the what was it? Batman Forever movie. <laughs> <laughs> This was Look, before I, Marvel, though. Yeah. I loved the Batman Forever movie for the silliness and the dumbness of it. The goofiness. But yeah. it is super campy mm-hmm. and over the top. <laughs> Extremely campy, bro. It's well, like you said, that, 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 that gave it its charm. That was like the old Batman yeah. movies with Adam West type of deal. You know, kind it of. It did feel like know. that, yes. Right? So We were I mean, just I missing the pow and the biff and the pop <laughs> and the... Yeah, exactly. And the bang and the shark repellent. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> so uh, I love well, it. speaking That's of cool. this new DCU, uh, we're getting new uh, leaked images uh, from the Superman film set, and uh, okay, we've got our new our first look at the engineer. And if you guys don't, okay. if you guys have, don't remember who this actress is, uh, if you've ever seen Deadly Class, that series. I think it was on FX. Yeah, um, that was I. I actually liked that series, but it's it's done. They canceled it, um, and it obviously, it was based off a comic book. Um, I think they did. I think it was good, but you know, not everyone's a fan. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she is um, from that from that TV uh, epi- okay. uh, series. And she's playing the engineer. So here is the first look. Oh, look at that. Nice. What she looks like. Uh, obviously, she's going to be flying. So she has some kind of device hooked harness, up there so she I can guess. fly. Yeah, some kind of harness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't believe this is what the suit's going to look like because there are dots on her, if you can mm. see. So motion these are capture. markers for motion capture and, oh, you know, okay. adding CGI over, like, probably going to be layered on top of the, the outfit. Sure, uh, sure. Oh, she's here. aiming. It's probably turning into weapons or hands, huh? Yeah, That's yeah. So cool. okay. they're probably transforming or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I'm. I don't know if this gets me excited or moves the needle, but it's just another step forward, knowing that we're we're getting our ducks in a row to get to the Superman movie. Dude, so many uh, characters are being uh, shown in the Superman movie, man. This is going to be like the jump off of DC, dude. That's a yeah. lot of characters already. We talked about Green Lantern. We talked about her. We talked about who else? Lex Luthor. All these characters, yep. dude. Hawk like, Girl, Hawk Mr. Hawk Girl. Terrific, uh, Metamorphosis. Uh, yeah. There are so many characters in this dude, movie. Yeah, this, this, this is the jump off. This is where DC is going to jump this off. Dude. That's crazy. makes me feel like the Superman movie is going to start like the new 52 comic started. So uh, in the new 52, they rebooted the characters, the but they yeah. existed in a world that already was like going on where we just sure. catch up in the middle of it. Yeah, and it's the exactly. first time that Superman meets Batman and the first time Batman meets Green Lantern, you know, and it's like there's all these heroes in here and that it must be super villains already in this universe. Exactly. So I think that's how they're starting this whole process. Hmm. I like that. Because I, I don't want to just a pure reboot where it just everything starts again. Origin you know, story it. here and there. Oh, it's like, come on, everybody. If you don't know the origin story of Superman, it's like, come on, man. You could, <laughs> you can yeah, look out. that up. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. I like this. If they're starting in the middle of an actual universe, I like that. Because, I mean, they could go backwards, forwards. It'd be, it'd be cool. I like that, dude. Yes. I want to see that. Uh, let's talk about something I know you want to talk about. And I want to talk about because I just saw the trailer and I was like, huh? They're making a new game. <laughs> oh, this Marvel. one, 1943 yeah. Rise of Hydra has a new trailer out. The cast has been revealed. The likeness of the motion capture of the uh animation uh, that's a lot of ofs. Um, they're so realistic. I can tell who each of those actors are. I- I think this is a movie, to be honest. I don't think it's a game. I think you it's a sure movie. it's a movie. I thought I think this it's was. A movie. Is it? Oh, is it? No, Marvel I, Games. A Marvel Games, dude. It looks so much like a movie, dude. Yeah. I, I was knew like, it was, you know I what? I thought it was a game. 
dude, I'll be, you know what? If if this was, if they made movies like this, I wouldn't mind. You know, like kind of this animation, it looks so real. Right. It awesome, but but the, it, this, that would be expensive. Yeah, that would. <laughs> because because yeah. games make a whole lot more than movies do. Uh, at least they have the potential to. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, they do. Movies can, I mean, games can make billions of dollars. Oh, my. A movie, dude, the, the if revenue. you get to a billion, woohoo. Uh-huh. I know, right? That's like going down in history, right? But this, uh, I dude, it's like I don't know. This is cool because I mean, I wish we would have got this as a movie. You know, back in 1943, where Cap was probably in his prime. You know, fighting Black Panther, whoever. This is the rise of Hydra too. This would be kind of a cool story. To Who tell says well. we still can't get a movie like that? They can retcon uh... the Marvel universe where we have Steve Rogers back in 1943. And guess what? He meets uh, T'Challa's grandfather uh, mm. on the battlefield. He also has Logan next to him. Mm. And even okay. Sabretooth. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Oof. Man, right? That'd be, that'd be a dream. That definitely be a dream. So uh, I, I could, I, I would love that. But that's yeah, wishful. This, this was all cinematic, dude. I mean, if the cinematic plays with the gameplay, this game is going to look amazing. It's like you're playing a movie, dude. Like, I don't think they showed any gameplay. I just think they no. showed um, just the story. Just cinematic. Yeah. Yeah, it's all cinematic. I and wish they would have showed some gameplay, dude. That would have been so dope. That's why I think it threw some threw you off and threw some people off. Because mm. people are questioning, is this a show? Is this a movie? Well, the thing is, they didn't say what platform either. Because when the game drops, it goes PC, Xbox, PlayStation. It it said none of the consoles, so that really threw me off. Like, is this a movie? That's well, why it's I got also so confused. Over a year away, for sure. Over a year, there's no way this is gonna be ready beginning in 2025. No, yeah, no, because this is there's no gameplay at all. And this no. this was like almost this dropped out of nowhere. I didn't. I heard nothing about them working on a Cap and Panther game at all. N- never heard so, about it. Yeah. No. So this must and be in really early stages for gameplay. But the actor for the Black Panther, if you guys have watched The Walking Dead, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure he's the king. Mm, the the likeness of that actor, huh? The one with the lion? With the lion, yes. Yeah. He had the white dreads, the white hair and dreads. Or the tiger, whatever. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm and- pretty sure that's him. Because <laughs> it looks like him. It looks a lot like him. And how about Cap? Did, did he look like anybody to you? Any actor? Uh, he, they, they Cap, I didn't recognize him. Uh, Cap is Cap. Drew more uh, Drew Moreland. I don't know who that is. Me neither. Because I was. But like, I think Kerry Payton is the guy from The Walking Dead. Okay. Uh, okay. And then uh, Megan Megaline. I don't I'm gonna mess this up. Ichiku okay. Moke, uh-huh. uh plays the Wakandan, Wakandan spy, which is her. And then this guy, um, he's part of the uh, Howling Commandos, and his, his the actor is Gabriel Jones. I'm um, not Gabriel Jones. Uh, Mar- Marque Richardson. Uh, so what throws me off too? Is Skydance. That's a that's a movie production, isn't it? Skydance. Right. And it says new media. I just really hope this is not like uh, what's it called? Like uh, kind of like pick your own adventure. Like do this, no. and then they'll show this. Do no, this, I think it's a. Movie. I, I don't really think it is. Not, I think dude. they said, what is it? Um, the game not how they said the gameplay was going to be. It's going to be a straight line. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. It uh, doesn't really say upcoming action adventure game. Okay, action adventure. Okay, so it's not like um, like Telltale games. If it's a Telltale no. game, I I'm not I'm not interested. I don't like I don't like these like choose your adventures or like no. I think it's, it's just the production. The it's the production of the story. Okay, so that's why they probably need a Skydance, dude. But the graphics on this it looked almost real time, real actors. So I'm really <laughs> impressed by the graphics to be honest. But I mean, I yeah. can't. I can't wait to see this game in live action. I need to like, see the game gameplay. Play. Yeah, yeah, dude, for sure. We'll keep you, we'll, we'll keep everyone posted. <laughs> <That's for sure. laughs> All right. Um, awesome. Awesome. Let's move moving. Uh, so there have been a lot of talks. I don't know if we talked about this. I don't think we did about the cancellations. Oh, we talked about a few, but not, I don't think all. Okay, of them. so the one of the execs uh, on the uh, Disney Plus side. 
um, mm-hmm. said that there were a lot of um, they're, they're going for quantity over quality. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a lot of issues um, in, in the production on the Disney Plus side because uh, basically what he was saying is the old guard, which was Bob Chapek, who's no longer there, the mm-hmm. guy who was there during the pandemic. His standing order was to make as much product for Disney Plus and make them as fast as you can. Oh, so yeah, quality over quantity. Yeah, okay. His quantity saying. over quality at that point. Yeah. And he didn't care. And his mentality was, oh, the fans just want to see products. They don't care. Yeah. Uh, how they want to see pretty colors. They want to see flashy things. <laughs> yeah. So, so that is the reason that everyone hates the mcu for the last three years oh my goodness this guy prioritized certain things over others and it was the wrong decisions um the person who worked above kevin feige was a banker was a former banker so obviously he has no creative mind he's just all about financial and uh you know that probably cut down yeah numbers and and people and uh, all that great stuff. So yeah, this I'm glad that that guy is no longer there and they're writing the ship. But uh, he also said that they're still uh, in a pre pre like stages of coming up with a like a Nova story. Oh, okay. So that is like still that. in the works. <clears throat> okay. Uh, obviously, that would probably be done way down the line. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Might not even be done until closer to Secret Wars or after. Uh, okay. But Ironheart has shot. I know that has been shot, uh, and that will probably be released later on. Uh, but there, for right now, I think it's just on hold. And yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm happy that they're moving in the right direction. They are mm-hmm. going for the quantity. I mean, quality. They're going for better storytelling. Uh, and that's that's the reason why you guys are upset. So uh, I get it. And uh, it takes time to see the change, though. So, you know, yes. in the next couple of it's years. Not, it's not overnight. It's not overnight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, this year, it's still productions from all that old era. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it is what it is. But they'll get better. And we have something mm-hmm. to look forward to because there's some hope. There you go. Yeah, exactly. They're going to the right direction, I think. But in relation to that, there's actually a war going on at Disney. Hmm. So there is a power struggle going on in Disney. um, And it is Bob Iger, who is the president right now, Mm -hmm. and a small group that is, uh, I think they're part of the board. Um, And I forgot what the guy's name is, Nick Helps or... uh, trying to find the guy's name here i actually wrote it down there it is pelts so this guy is been trying to take over disney for a long time oh geez and it's before Iger even um had left the this last time so when Iger was actually there uh previously when they were doing great um this guy was always trying to get um, control of Disney and so we can put in new leadership in, in place. Sure. And one of the people behind this Pelts guy is Ike Perlmutter. And I have mentioned that guy's name so many times on our channel. <laughs> I hate the guy because the guy is <laughs> worthless. Uh, he's oh, not a geez. good creative. Uh, he is, he's a money guy um, and uh, more, more like putting money in his pockets, but um, mm-hmm. Ike Perlmutter is the person who used to be the boss of Kevin Feige. Oh, I see. And that's when Avengers and Age of Ultron was having issues. Mm-hmm. Like that whole run of movies between them two. Um, because he wasn't going... He Ike Perlmutter was saying he wasn't going to pay Robert Downey Jr. so much money. Oh, really? Yeah, so they were trying to kill off Robert Downey Jr.'s character. Before he even made his grand exit. Oh, right. Uh, and so it, it was it was one of those issues. And he's the guy who created the Inhumans uh, television show. Oh, geez. That didn't go well. 
Yeah, so that we know that through. this guy does not have a good track record. This is yeah. why Kevin Feige almost quit so many years ago around the Avengers, Avengers Age of Ultron time period. Um, and he threatened to quit if things weren't changed. And Bob Iger said, okay, you report directly to Alan Horn, who direct who uh, who goes directly to me. So he skips Ike Perlmutter, and that guy wasn't happy. And that guy eventually left maybe after the Inhumans show. <laughs> and uh, and that guy is trying to be, get back at Disney and Bob Iger this whole time. So Revenge. Um, oh, he has a yeah. little revenge plot. Jeez. And I think at their next uh, shareholders meeting, there's supposed to be a vote. Who is to be the president, or who's you know, or if they're gonna take out Bob Iger? Uh, and uh, George Lucas has come out and supported uh, Bob Iger, and he's a huge shareholder. We oh, all know yeah. why. <laughs> Ten oh, yeah. years ago, he, he has a huge voice, dude. He has a huge yep. play in this too. So that's that's crazy. That's incredible. I mean, he's not the only person backing up Bob Iger, but I mean, it's just it's smart business um, that Bob Iger is still in charge, even though people might not like him. Or people think he's the problem. Um, people don't know things behind the Hollywood scenes, so they have uh, misplaced their anger. Uh, don't get me wrong; he's not perfect. He's done some <laughs> stupid stuff too. Yeah, but, but comparison with the other guy, yeah, yeah, you don't want to compare yourself to the other guy. The other guy is way worse. Exactly. If you thought this don't is bad, <laughs> if if don't you think Kevin in. Feige's bad. Wait till you see the other guys. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So be grateful, you know. <laughs> yes. So, uh, and with that said, I mean, obviously there were some issues uh, that Bob Iger had to fix. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm. this is where he canceled, or supposedly canceled, Eternals 2 and Man 4, mm. Captain Marvel 3. However, if you guys really read the article, that's not the case. So if you really read this article... Eternals 2 has actually been uh, a project that Kevin Feige wants to make. Okay. There's no secret behind it that he loves the Eternals uh, characters. He likes, uh, I believe he likes the actors that he hired, <laughs> you know, and he wants to make yeah. the second movie. Bob Iger okay. has told him, you know, we got to cut out some of these movies. We got to shelve some of these movies. Um, and Eternals just happened to be one of those movies that he put on that list. Uh, so between the two of them, they've agreed to put a hold on Eternals 2. So it's not canceled. It's on hold until they can figure this all out. Hmm. We might not get it. We might never get our Eternals 2, but we also might get one three years down the line. Who knows? Four years. Um, and then MF4 and Captain Marvel 3. Uh, I don't know if they were ever going to make an Ant-Man 4. Uh but um, they've both been on a uh, shelf. So they're not necessarily canceled. They mm -hmm. are on the shelf until a later date, if need be, or if they can come back to it. But Or they can make a good movie, write a good story. Uh, I don't think they probably will. I, I would probably be done with both of those as well. Um, but uh, I think The Eternals 2 can make it. Um, so it's still in, in its early infancy, dude. Like, yeah, Ant Man 4, that's like it's already too much along the story. But see, Eternal 2 is reportedly on hold. Oh, Kevin God. Feige wants to make it, but Bob Iger thinks it's a guaranteed flop. Hmm. Uh, it could be true, but I don't think there was any issues with Eternals necessarily. There's just some people who were like, oh, that. You know, there's too many characters, so there's too many stories going on, and it's just too much, right? Or, or, or how does it fit in the, in the timeline? Or how does it fit right. in the MCU? Because you got to remember, there's that the, that Titan that's frozen in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, the, and the Celestial. What's it called? Yeah. Celestial, and nobody talked about it in future Marvel movies. I think it's, I think it's Tiamat. I think it's yeah. the name of the Celestial. Tiamat, yeah. Nobody talked about it. It's like Eternals is its own thing. It's not even in the MCU, it feels like. But exactly we'll have to see we'll have to see how they change that well I, i'm sure there's a storyline for that celestial being in the ocean but um i don't know I, I i think what happened is is some of these things had to be put on hold these stories and these through mm -hmm. lines 
because Bob Chapik was switching things around so much. I mean, they and could then, say that, but they could say Doctor Strange is putting a cloak of invisibility over it. They can yeah. make something up. It's fantasy. They can of make course. anything up. But it's just they haven't even said that. You know, it's like, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. I, I'm sure they'll write it in eventually. Just exactly. be patient, people. <laughs> <laughs> a lot uh, of people talk and, about that. Like, what the? Then nobody saw this thing. It was hilarious. But yeah, we'll see. Yes. And then uh, Shang Chi Two is moving oh, forward. Um, oh, cool. They're going to make a Shang Chi Two. But if you've read the article, so it, all the news that's going around right now is <clears throat> Shang Chi Two is going to introduce Iron Fist. Is going to have Iron Fist in the movie. Ah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, it, and people are thinking, oh, it's the Netflix, you know, Iron Fist. And <laughs> and uh, then they're saying there's going to be time travel in this movie and it's going to be connected to the multiverse and everything. Um, <clears throat> if you guys read everything, sure, they could be bringing him Iron Fist in. But like I said before, I think it's possible that it's a different Iron Fist. It's a multiverse Iron Fist. It's a Iron Fist, you know, back in time. Because it's a time movie, right? I heard this like a right. time travel movie, probably. Right. So, okay. So, and then we'll probably figure out more about the Ten Rings, yes. which is probably why they'll time travel. Mm -hmm. That's what my thought is. Well, if you think and, about it, they could tie Kang into it, right? Because because Kang time yeah. travels. I mean, in a way, right? So yes, and yeah. and also he he has so many different variants. Exactly. That any any of them could be related to this whole Ten Rings thing. Yep. Yep. Um and. If you really read the article, they reveal that Iron Fist is going to be the same. The Iron Fist that's supposed to be in the Shang-Chi 2 movie is going to be the same Iron Fist that will appear in the animated series Eyes of Wakanda. And that's where that Iron Fist will make its first appearance. Oh, okay. So people keep missing these parts. Yeah. And that's the important part, right? There's yeah. First of all, there's going to be an animation Eyes of Wakanda. Mm-hmm. Second, they're going to introduce an Iron Fist in that series. Yeah. And third, that's going to be the same character Iron Fist that's going to be in live action movies. Wow, the living weapon it's himself. That's yeah. pretty cool, man. That's pretty so cool, actually. I'm looking forward to that. Yes. They're expanding on that, and I'm glad to see that. They're making some movement on it. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. All right. Let's uh another rumor going around. So someone uh, interviewed James Marsden about possibly being reviving Cyclops in Deadpool and Wolverine since there's so many different cameos supposed to be in it. And what we find out is he was actually shooting a movie across the street from where they were shooting Deadpool and Wolverine. Was he shooting the Sonic, time. the next Sonic movie, I think? Or I something think like so, Sonic 3. Yeah, he was, he was doing that, he uh, heard. And some people say, yeah, oh, are you right part there. of this movie? Oh, I was right, okay. Yeah, and he said that like um, people were speculating, oh, he must be part. He's like, no, I'm, I'm busy doing something else. But that's kind of cool. <laughs> but more than likely, he'll be in it. I hope so. I hope so. But then again, remember, he's also died how many times in this damn? Oh, jeez, I know. How many times do you want to bring him back? That's true. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I I wouldn't mind seeing him look. Say goodbye to the Fox characters, or have them be part of this multiverse and then eventually have them die in secret wars or the multiversion like Avengers five or Avengers six, whatever they right, are. Right. Right. You know, then you can, they can die off into the sunset. <laughs> into a great ending. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and then um, secret wars is getting a couple of leaks or rumors. I don't know if any of these are true. Um, it, these could be old plot lines. Who knows? Old written line um, scripts. But one of the uh, rumors going around is the Avengers 5 movie, which they've changed supposedly from Kang Dynasty, um, is that the new characters like Moon Knight, She-Hulk, um, and others will be getting their butt whoops by Kangs, by an army of Kangs. Wow. Uh, and that's where it'll go into the next one, Secret Wars. So that's that's supposedly supposed to happen, but you know, we'll story. see. And and that also means that there's going to be Kang coming back, 
which everyone thought that they'll get rid of that character once Jonathan Majors has was booted from Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, that is not the case. They're still looking for their new king. Wow, I wonder who they're going to pick. I That's wonder if they actually already picked it. They probably have. They probably had. Ever since this salt fiasco started, they probably were already looking and already calling people, dude. Come on. Yeah. They probably have. I'm sure of it because they had that that exit <laughs> um, uh, announcement yep. uh, all planned, quick. ready to go. <laughs> really quick, dude. Yeah, I know. That was really quick. So you're right. And, and then talking about Secret Wars, mm -hmm. there is a chance that – Kevin Feige has been talking with Sony about the new. So they've been talking about that new amazing. Um, um, sorry, not amazing. The new Spider-Man four movie, mm -hmm. right with uh, Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was all these talks about you know Sony wants it to be a multiverse thing, just like the last movie, and they want to include Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, and they want of that they do. that kind of storyline. And <clears throat> obviously, it makes no sense because of the way the story went. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but in that, those talks, I'm pretty sure Kevin Feige had talks about Venom, uh, and they're talking about him, Tom Hardy's Venom joining the Avengers movie. Really? And if it, it would make a little, there's, there's a little sense that you could be made from this one in, uh, far from, is it far from home? Yeah. Far from home. Uh, they, he left a piece of his symbiote there. Oh, uh, yeah, he did at the bar, at yeah. the bar in Hawaii or something like that. Yeah, or in the tropics, wherever, wherever it was. It was. Yeah. yeah, Honolulu. I don't know where he, they dropped them. Uh, and yeah, then, um, and so, and remember, he's his his venom is a multiversal venom. He has oh he knowledge of all yeah. the symbiotes throughout the multiverse. That's true. He said that they're at the and, hotel room. And yeah. if, they, if they have that ability, who says that they don't have the ability to, like, travel through the multiverse mm -hmm. or find a way or the TVA or Deadpool? <laughs> I know, right? The TVA is in there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I not necessarily wouldn't mind that happening because it'll at least be the first time that this Tom Holland gets to meet a Venom and this Venom gets to meet a Spider-Man. Yeah, I know, right? At last, we get Venom and Spider-Man both in the same on the same big screen, uh, and that would kick off the Tom Holland symbiote storyline. Okay, in the MCU though, right? right. And, and connected to the whole Secret War storyline, which would fit uh, perfectly, like in comic books. Yeah, know? well, kind of. Well, then in the best way possible. Yeah, yeah. the closest way possible. Closest way mean. possible. Yeah. yeah, okay, I see that then. So okay. yeah, I mean, what do you think? Of, like of you, Tom Hardy joining the MCU, like you said, man, if he joins the, the Secret Wars, because we all know that Spidey got that suit from the Fantastic Four in order for him to be in the Secret Wars. Everyone knows that classic cover where he's like standing with the black suit, right? So, I think that's the best way if you want Tom Hardy to be involved to do it through the Secret Wars, even though it's not exactly, you know, how you say. Well, the, well what could happen is they can kill him off in Secret Wars. It will be his last be movie as Venom. And then you have the new Venom uh, saga in the MCU because of that one um, drop of semen. Right? I think the be the best way to do it, kill him off in Secret Wars. Peter Parker takes the symbiote suit during that. Yeah. Or it could be yeah. something like that. And, and right. then instead of Eddie Brock being Venom in the MCU, uh -huh. it would be more like um, who was uh, Spider-Man's bully? Um, oh, Z uh, Thompson. Yes, uh, Tom Flash Thompson. Oh, Flash Thompson. Yes. So you, okay. Instead of yes. So once yes. the suit leaves him, it would go to Flash Thompson instead. Another. And Flash bully. Thompson mm -hmm. is in the MCU already. He is. So if they do it like that, I think that would be the best way possible to bring Venom back because it kind of falls in the line of the actual, yep. you know, reading material, kind of, but in the best way. I think that'd be cool. Kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what other way can they do it? You know, instead of a full reboot. But yeah, yeah, it's I mean the way that you you get put in these spots and these corners by mm. you know joining up with Sony and 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 having to deal with whatever thoughts they have. Yeah. You, you got to compromise, so You do. You really do. You work with what you got. Yep. True that. Uh and then hey, all you Agents of Shields fans, guess oh. what's <laughs> happening? 
Surprise. I don't believe it. Surprise. I don't believe it necessarily yet, but there are talks behind the scenes by Marvel studio execs that there could be a revival of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't know in the same form or the same actors, uh, but who knows? Uh, I mean, because they, bre- they brought back the Daredevil Netflix series. Ah, true. Uh, they're all... This would be full Disney, wouldn't it? This would be full Disney, huh? Disney yeah. Plus show? Okay. okay. Uh, I can see that. I then. think, um, you know, I'm pretty sure the Punisher is part of canon as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other characters, they're saying that's canon, but we'll see because we haven't seen those characters or any announcements of them joining the MCU. Right, right. But, I mean, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. makes sense, in a sense, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because they'll have... Uh, they have the sword station or yeah. saber, saber, station. saber, saber station. Correct. Right. And then, um, I mean, agents, uh, shield could always come back. Uh, there, you know, the world is getting crazier, so they're going to need this kind of government agency. If there are not still exist, existing, they could make a uh, captain America. Doesn't it become like the, what's it called? The shield, um, command commander or something like that. Yeah. But he's, a, he's in the sword space station and he's yeah. super old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, because he's out of the Cap. game now. I mean, he's out yeah. of the game now. So, and he's old man they're... Cap, so he, he could play that. But so, I don't, I don't know if they want to see a decrepit <laughs> Cap. Decrepit Cap. Who knows? But I mean, they could take this in any direction. And you're right. Now that you know, there's uh, these Disney Plus shows. They need to have a Shield show too. Something that's that works in the background with all these other shows. You know. I can see that happening, dude. Definitely. I can see a balance like that. Yeah. And then you can yeah. always introduce like characters just like they do on the Disney Plus shows that are like, you'll never see these characters in the movies. But exactly. Yeah, we'll give them a little spot here. Sure. Why not? I can see it happening. So, yeah, it's not yeah. impossible. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Look, I loved Quake. I loved uh, Coulson. I love Ming Na Wen. Mm. You bring those three back, I'm good. <laughs> we have a show. <laughs> yeah, we have a show. Nice. Um, and if everybody doesn't know, X Men '97 was released today. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first two episodes came out. Um, I haven't I've, seen them yet, dude. Do you see them? I saw them. Do you like them? They were not bad at all. They were okay. pretty good. Haven't uh, seen it yet, so I can't really get my opinion. Right I, now, I'm not trying to see them. Though. I'm not trying to overhype them. That's why I'm not trying okay. to overhype. Them. But <laughs> I, and I'm not saying that they're bad at all. Not even close. Okay. okay. Good. Um, good. They were good. It, it very much in line of the old series. That's um, what I like to hear. And one of my theories that I called out last time is actually showed up in this two episodes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, like a main villain? Uh, oh, I, I don't want to say a main villain. I'm just going to say a character shows up in episode two. And uh, I called it out in relation to the other characters, but you'll have to see, cause I don't want to, re- I don't want to spoil for anyone. This just came out. So I'm not going to talk about it in detail, uh, okay. but people are, all the critics are saying, you know, one of the best releases in years from Marvel. Uh, this is captivating. It's in the same vein as the original X-Men animated series. So, I mean, everything's on the up and up for this X-Men 97, at least for the first two episodes. Cool. Too bad. The artist or director got, Got kicked out. Well, right? uh, a little update on that. Oh, um, geez. There are two reasons supposedly rumored that why this guy got fired actually now. What's that? Uh, the first one is is he was a difficult person to work with. Ugh, that's never uh, good. That's never good. But that's not necessarily in Hollywood. That is definitely not one of those things you necessarily get fired for. Yeah, I know. Yeah, um, true. Uh, most of those egomaniacs are difficult to work with. Yeah, it I doesn't bet, matter. Man. Uh, but there was also another rumor that the director had an OnlyFans account. Oh, really? Yep. Interesting. Okay. Yep. So, and you're working with Disney? Is like, come on. Is like, yep. That's why he probably deleted his social media. Uh huh. And that is why it quietly went away. <laughs> I mean, in, in this OnlyFans, did he wear like a Wolverine mask? Like people are like, oh, that's him. Or did he wear like a Magneto mask? Or something? <laughs> I, to... I didn't read the details, but uh, a guy that is a insider in the Hollywood scene 
mm-hmm. I, who I trust to get good information. He's the guy who got that, broke that story. Wow. So that's crazy. I believe it. And that sucks. <laughs> yeah, that does. I mean, working for Disney, you can't really have those type of accounts. Yeah. Unless, unless yeah, your see? master secretly doing it, I guess. I don't know, man. But that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I mean like you say, it's a rumor. Like you said, it's a rumor. So we don't know. But it is just interesting a rumor. rumor, none the least, though. Interesting rumor, none the least. But if you see here, the Mayo's only fan account was a major sticking point <laughs> for a <laughs> historically family friendly ca- company. <laughs> Dude, they should have a Disney Plus fans only, like a different section. They were saying the site had unsettling and creepy stuff content oh then you can't have that dude no. i mean you, you're, you're working for disney they're like uh you are an example of disney so i mean that makes sense but man that's it's so just crazy. like why gina carano got let go yes you yeah, can't true. look you can have freedom of speech oh you but can when you represent and you have a contract with a company and they and you represent them when you speak out to the public because you are a public person now, yeah, public you figure. Are. Now you're messing with their brand and their money. Yes. <clears throat> and so, that's I mean, so, these corporations don't they don't mess around with that stuff. Yeah, and like you said, you have the right to say anything, but you also have the right to suffer the consequences, the consequences. and repercussions. There are always right. consequences with the freedom of speech. Yes, there is. So yeah, small that's or- crazy. <laughs> I didn't know that, man. That's like okay. Now it makes sense. I'm like okay. <laughs> that's a, that's a reason. Mm-hmm, that's a reason. <laughs> and uh, let, let's move on from the only fan guy. And uh, <laughs> well, look at this. We once said that Star Wars Squad Rogue Squadron oh, yeah. was canceled. Yeah. And uh, Patty Jenkins, uh, Patty Jenkins says she's back. Well, obviously, she has no Wonder Woman three to do. So uh, <laughs> yeah, and there's no more DCU. So. Now she uh, is, she owes a draft of the script to Disney and Lucasfilm. And guess what? My, I heard that she had signed a new contract with um, Lucasfilm right before the strikes happened. Okay. So that's why she was, she's back on the Star Wars Rogue Squadron. They, they figured this all out once they found out that the DCU was dead and that she wasn't going to be part of the James Gunn DCU. So. But she owes yeah. a script, huh? She owes. Well, now she now. does because she signed that contract before the right. before the uh, strike, and and it was to do the script for Rogue Squadron. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, what do you think of it coming back? I mean, who knows? It might never still get filmed. Who knows? See the light of day. I mean, Rogue Squadron. I love the aviation in Star Wars. It's part of Star Wars, dude. And I always want to see Rogue Squadron. That side of the story of you know, kind of like the Top Gun of Star Wars. Well, I like to see one. war in Star Wars. Yeah, I know, right? It's in the name, for Christ's sakes. But I mean, I, I want to see this. I definitely do because we. That we have nothing on Rose Squadron, any movies at all, any shows, nothing about the pilots at all, dude. No. So I want to see something dedicated to them. I'd like to see that. I hopefully Patty Jenkins does uh, I mean Wonder Woman 2 wasn't good. One was excellent, but I yep. mean I wonder if she has you know the chops or the knowledge to actually create this. I don't know, dude. I don't know much of her background besides those two. Well, movies. she her father was um a pilot, a fighter pilot. Oh, so you think that's gonna yeah, yeah. She Alonzo. mentioned this when they when they announced it. What up, Alonzo? Yeah. So she mentioned that when they announced that she was going to do Rogue Squadron, okay. where she was uh, in front of walking in front of the that X wing, that fake X wing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> right, so right. yeah. So I mean, look, she she probably has the knowledge. She can get the knowledge. She can obtain you know from from family and and people are related to her family in the military. So I'm sure. She can write a good uh, dog fight. Um, let's see if cool. she can write a good story. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a sci-fi dog fight. That sounds pretty cool, actually. Yeah, you know what? I'll look forward to watching this, to be honest. I do want to see this side of Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, me too. I definitely do. So we'll see. And then it, it would I'm sure it would include uh, that Korean actor who's in The Mandalorian. Oh, um, Kim's Convenience. Yes. And also he plays... Um, the uncle in Avatar. Oh, What's does he? I I can't uh, remember his name. He plays a uh, uh, Zuko's uncle. He's in. Oh. I mean, I, 
I love them as an animated character, and I love them as a, as live action. He just he has all these wise words, and he's so goofy and funny, and a powerful fighter. He's one of my favorite characters in that show, animated, and also the live live action show. Good actor, so. funny actor. So yeah, I love him, dude. He's pretty cool. Can't wait. Uh, and if you guys haven't seen it yet, you Star oh, Wars yeah. fans, the Acolyte had its first trailer out. Um, it, it's it's. Even though it was like a full trailer's link, I still think it's a teaser trailer mm-hmm. because it didn't really give you too, too much. Paul um, Sung Hyung Lee is the guy's name that yeah, we were talking about before. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, well, I, maybe I would count it as a first trailer. It's uh, I, Some people didn't like it. I actually liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, I like well, I like a lot of things, but... <laughs> I, it's very hard to to make it uh, make me hate it, uh, uh-huh. but seeing Carrie Ann Moss as a Jedi, yeah, nailed it. Uh, yeah. That Jace uh, is it? I forgot the the actor's name. Jace Quan or Jace the guy from Squid Games. Yeah, the guy from Squid Games. Uh, perfect. That was. That was the coolest part, actually. I'm like, this guy being a Jedi? I'm like, I need to see this. That's actually pretty cool. That got me off the start. That whole yeah. beginning, I was good with. Seeing the younglings, um, seeing like 12 lightsabers in this freaking trailer, bro. Yeah, no kidding, man. Dope. Seeing all those Jedis getting blown away. Mm-hmm. Dope. Uh, seeing a red lightsaber cutting through the forest. Again, dope. Um, the fighting looks great. It's it's mm-hmm. more very martial arts, um, you know, battling uh, one-on-ones or whatever. And I can't wait to actually see everything. Uh, I hope they don't ruin this. I know. Um, but there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there's a chance for everything. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we've got a character named May. That was the character that was fighting um, Carrie Ann Moss. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then, yeah, Lee Jung Jae. That's it. He's Master Soul. Uh, and then uh, the guy from The Good Place, he plays uh, a uh, smuggler, uh, Kamir. We got Carrie Ann Moss as um, a Master Jedi. Um, and then you, so there's a bunch of masters here. Holy crap. We see students and then we yeah. see them as, uh, as grown up, I guess. And then there's mother and Nisea, mm-hmm. and she's supposed to be like this coven of witch that when you see, when you see them, she's like dressed up like a nunish wish right. kind of yeah. person. Um, <clears throat> if you read the high Republic, I think they're supposed to be related to or possibly related to the order of the hand i think or something like that or okay it's it's almost like uh a precursor to those uh witches from death Mm, Death i'm not sure if they're related but it's it feels like that kind of cultish Mm -hmm. covenant feeling um and then you've got daphne king and she's playing uh, apprentice to master soul Mm -hmm. and she's like a alien she, oh, yeah. she has makeup on. She looks like a Chitara. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, she's like, what is that? Or what's that noise towards the end of the trailer? Yeah. yeah. They're, in the, they're we, in the swampy forest or something. And yeah. then that one um, uh, Jedi, uh, Vanestra Ro, Ro. she's uh-huh. a Jedi master, and I think she was like kind of almost the main character in this trailer, mm-hmm. or at least the people that... Uh, she comes from the comic book, so she's definitely everyone's been buying and selling the hell out of that comic book. Oh right god, I bet. <laughs> right when they saw this, they're like, Oh, gotta pull them prices out. Yeah, gotta do them specs, gotta do them specs. Uh yeah, and then and then on top of that, people are confused of which which is her first appearance, too. So oh geez. good luck, people. <laughs> <laughs> he better study up on that. Uh, did you watch this? Yeah, no, I watched it, and um I do like uh it's funny because what's his name? Uh, Kate Ann, Carrie Ann Moss. Kate Ann mm-hmm. Moss was it? I swore like at, when I first saw her, I'm like she looks familiar. And then she started <laughs> doing the she started doing the kung fu. I'm like, oh, she's from the Matrix. <laughs> yeah. that, dude, it just reminded me so much of Matrix when she did. She, uh, she was one. being Neo. I know exactly, dude. So I was like, okay, you know what? I think they played up. If they want to go like the kung fu route, they picked the perfect actress to, to do it because she has. I just, 
She has the ability. I just need far. her to like jump a far distance. Exactly. Or do that. Like a step. huge gap. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A forced jump. Maybe, dude, maybe, uh, maybe it's interconnected, dude. Matrix and Star Wars. Maybe yeah, they're right. the same thing. <laughs> but um uh, the story, I mean, the story is really nothing new. It's uh enemy or a Sith killing off Jedi. That's really nothing well, new. We don't even know necessarily if it's a Sith. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's pretty plain and simple. It is a Sith. Mm-hmm. Um, you see, you see the red lightsaber. But then again, I I, I go with the question. Um, I know this. I know this is not the first time you see a red lightsaber, right? Red lightsabers right. were eons before, correct? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, they, this is so. The time period of this show. It's a hundred years before the prequels, I think. Hundred years before the Phantom yeah. Menace, which yes. is the last hundred years. Or, yeah, the last hundred years of the High Republic, which mm-hmm. is basically the falling of the High Republic, almost mm-hmm. toward that that beginning of that fall. Okay, because I remember she was like in in the in the in the in the scene, she was like, "Oh, what is that?" And then you see the red lightsaber, and I'm like, "I hopefully they're not hinting this is the first red lightsaber because that doesn't fall in the no. timeline. Red red lightsabers were way no. before that. No, in know? the old Republic." It was always Sith versus Jedi. So everyone, mm-hmm. there was thousands of these people on exactly. both sides. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So hopefully they're, not, hopefully they're not hinting the first red lightsaber because that, that does, does not hit the timeline exactly. I just think okay. they're hinting that the fact that there's this evil person with a red lightsaber. Okay. So. Uh, and uh, if you guys know your Star Wars history, Yoda's alive, Yaddle's alive. Um, there might even be a couple of other Jedi masters who were like younglings or Padawans or mm-hmm. just Jedis at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of that, uh, you also probably had uh, Darth Plagueis alive at this mm. time. And he might actually be the villain. Darth Plagueis the Wise? Yes, Darth Plagueis uh, the Wise. And the, the reason wise. why I'm saying it's him, because obviously Palpatine is his... Was apprentice. his uh, apprentice? Yeah, that's and true. he was in the Phantom Menace a hundred years later. But remember yeah. the story that he tells Anakin is Darth Plagueis the Wise figured out how to cheat uh, death, cheat death, yes, and, and create life. Yes, it, so, I'd like to see more of that. So, so yes. if he was able to cheat death, he had to cheat death during his lifetime. <laughs> no, it's so true. that means he lived yeah. longer oh, yeah. than a normal yeah. being would have lived. Exactly. So it is quite possible that Darth Plagueis is quite strong in this in this series, like in the height of his powers or about to be in the, to the height of his powers. Almost a god. If he could <clears throat> create life, that's almost godlike powers, right? Creating right. life, resurrecting, and dude, yeah. Hell yeah. I, I, I hope it's Darth Plagueis because he's more interesting than probably his old master. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, or it could be toward that tail end, but... Um, there, there are a lot of things that they have to explain in this because later on in the other movies, uh, something like Mace Window says, oh, we haven't seen, heard of a Sith in like a thousand years. I know. Like, really? That like, long? This only Maybe. happened a hundred years ago. <laughs> I think I think it was over-exaggerating. You know, people are like, oh, I've been waiting for a thousand years. Maybe it was over-exaggerating, dude. I'm well, like, really? here's the thing I think I want them to explain. I want the storyline to be more like, oh, no, no, this happened a hundred years ago, but mm-hmm. every Jedi Master agreed to take that information oh, out of the library not included oh, so no one so, would actually know happened so, so there's no um, doubt in what the jedi order so they're trying to rewrite history just erase the, the sith's existence erase anyways. the bad yeah, thing that could happen yeah yeah that could happen that could definitely which, happen which would lead to the fall of the jedi which it did yeah because they're lies and more like yeah. political government stunts you know yeah and, i could see and that i would also like yoda not to be involved at all mm-hmm. because yoda also believed that because he never sensed the dark side and he never saw any of this yeah, coming. Yeah, so. he never saw none of it coming. So he says how yeah. blindly it is the force, the, the dark side of the force. That's yes. So true. Uh, and uh, this is the last thing, but I didn't want to end it on this, but the episodes were going to be super short. Really? How I should hate talking Disney about, like, sometimes. Like 15 minutes? Or I especially hate Lucas <laughs> films. But when, when it comes to this, the episode, Dude. so they interviewed the showrunner and 
from what I understand, the she had said, oh, the episodes are about 30 to 35 minutes long. Mm. Uh, and uh, maybe the finale is 40 minutes. And I'm like, what? So this is like regular TV type of it's, show. No, it's not even a regular TV show. It's it's <laughs> like a it's God. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> like sitcoms all, are thirty minutes. Like dude, all, all, all I'm missing is the commercials in, in, in the show. Dude, even if you I'm put missing. commercials in this in this show, you still not gonna get to an hour. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, so that's I'm sorry, minutes, so. people. Mm -hmm. Expect it to be short episodes, dude. And if it's a lot of action and story, that's going to go by like ten minutes. It's going to be uh, like a ten minute show. I, I I'm just I don't know how I feel about it. Like, look, you write a great story and you do it in thirty minutes. Congratulations, and I'll mm -hmm. be happy. Mm -hmm. That is probably the most story. difficult thing to do in television. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I agree. Unless you have top writers knowing how to write things in short segments, I applaud you. But we got to see that though. We got we got to wait and see. And the storyline is just a, a a Hardy Boys mystery. You know, <laughs> someone's killing the Jedi's. Who can kill the Jedi? <laughs> we we found the trace in the Coruscant galaxy. You know, let's go there. And it's like a like <laughs> connect the dots kind of go. Yeah, place. you know. So I mean, yeah. we'll see. Look, I I look forward to this. Uh, look at that. I mean, there's a Wookiee Jedi. You would never think, huh? But yeah, Republic, there's a Wookiee Jedi. Yeah. I want to see that Wookiee Jedi. Same here. They deserve to be Jedi's. Wookiees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean. And you got Jesus over there. So manage <laughs> your expectations, everyone. <laughs> That's yep. cool. All right. All right. That, all right. So that was the last article. Uh, I know it took us a little longer. There's a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Pretty cool um, stuff, though. Pretty exciting yeah, stuff. Really exciting stuff. A lot of different genres, a lot of different you know, movies, shows, things that mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's really talking about. I mean, I've never heard anyone talking about the never-ending story being rebooted. Or no, that's a, that's a good news, too, man. I want to really see that again. Yeah, I can't wait. So um, anything you were excited about that we talked about? Uh, the never-ending story, man. Like you just said, that one. And also, you just reminded me of the animated series of X Men. I need to catch up on that. Maybe I'll yes. watch that right now. That's pretty yes. cool. And um, and what else? Oh, in that in the uh, 1947 Captain America. 1943. Yeah. I, I definitely want to follow that. I need to know. I need to know the gameplay, dude, because it looked like a movie to me, and I was like, wait a second. So I need to. But catch the problem up is, that. is that trailer came out today. Yeah, I know. I don't yeah. think we'll get any gameplay for months. I mean, months. But I mean, I hope they they ask questions and they would know, you know, like I know, you know, like a reporting sites, they would ask, hey, what kind of gameplay? Give me an example. And they'll be like, oh, it's going to be like God of War. Oh, it's going to be like this. I just want that to get an idea of what it is. That's all I need. I, I mean, maybe they release it at C2E2 or maybe at uh, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, the gameplay. Ooh, yeah, I could see that Comic -Con, happening. I would love that, dude. I'd be all over that. That's a good that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea for Marvel to do. Hell yes, hell yeah. To be honest, and then, yeah, I'm looking forward to everything that's coming out. I don't care. I'm just a nerd, so uh, <laughs> We're I, happy I don't, with what I we don't discriminate, you know, because there was a time when us nerds didn't get any of this crap. Like we got no, like two percent. <laughs> exactly, exactly, man. Life before the internet was hard. Oh. Yep, and uh, so before we go. Uh, let me go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsors again. Yeah. So if you want to get 30 days of unlimited cover price for only 99 cents, you just got to type in the code Nirvana14. Go check out cover price. It is a good time to buy comic books right before all the major cons are happening. Um, and, and just the first couple of cons, you know, sprinkling in, uh, you're going to find some good deals. Um, I just saw an ultimate Fallout 4 no, 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 sorry, not Ultimate Fallout 4. Um, Edge of Spider Verse 2, 9.8 sell for $800. Whoa, what? Yeah, I, I saw uh, Ultimate Fallout 4 fell down to a thousand dollars, you know. So, like, there's you know, these are bigger books and bigger amounts, but that means everything else has come down, uh, like I said, and, and it's a good time to buy. So, go check them out, and then, uh, of course, you've 
got to get your store exclusives. You got to, especially like the eight, eight, uh, what is it? The Mario Brothers homage to, uh, uh, was it Eight Billion Genies? Yeah. And then that's, that's in the works. It's in pre development. Someone is, uh, I forgot who that team is. Um, is it Seth Rogen? Oh, yeah. They're making a movie. Yeah. yeah Seth, Seth Rogen, Rogen and, um, and the guy with the podcast show. What's his name? Uh, isn't he also uh, the the Goldbergs? Mm -hmm. Is it Adam Goldberg? I uh, don't remember who it was, but he's partnering up with somebody trying to get that going. And remember, Bursley cool. Comics had that great homage. Uh, that since the beginning, yep. yeah. So go get go check them out. Get ten percent off your purchase by typing in the code TNH10. And then, of course, our buddy at DisplayGeek.com. You want to protect all your toys, your video games, your uh, Funko Pops, you want a shelf, you know, makeshift shelf, uh, go get 10% off your first purchase by typing the code Team Nerd Herd. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, anything else? Uh, oh, I got to watch Samurai, uh, Sh uh, not Samurai, Shogun Episode 5. Oh, I got to start that one too, but I want to watch uh, The Exodus, though. I got to start that right now. So. Oh, my God. That ending of Episode <laughs> 4, I was like, what the hell? I was, it was, it's, this is Game of Thrones Samurai style. <laughs> oh, that's cool, dude. I'm telling you, it's crazy. That's um, cool. So I'm looking forward to episode five. I've heard good things already about that episode, and that thing just came out like yesterday. Oh man, I need to check that out. Man, I got so many shows to catch up on. It's crazy. Gosh, you and me both, but <laughs> uh, I can't wait, man. Uh, I'm gonna go geek out and go make a steak and and geek out Ooh, the show good. That sounds good. <laughs> I'll probably eat the rest of my sandwich and watch next man. <laughs> With, awesome. with that, with my Magneto helmet on, <laughs> actually, that would fit perfectly, sir. Right, <laughs> uh, and then and then next week we'll talk about the first two episodes. Yes, let's do that. So that'll be spoiler. Yeah. So we could spoil that. Yeah, and I'll have I'll have less articles for next week, so we'll, we can talk a little bit more and and uh, shorten down the time, so people aren't here for over an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, brother. All right. So uh, you want to take us out here, sir? Yeah, uh, if you want to do it right, watch what you like. Uh, we can geek for life. <laughs> Change it up a bit. <laughs> Take care, guys. Love you. Peace See out, you soon. everyone.